What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now Plus. I'm Alex. In this video, I want to talk about the controversial news story, I believe, of Volition Games being shut down, the reception to it. I got a lot of things to say, and I want to be respectful, and, and that's why I think this is so controversial, because we live in a world, and I do think it's true, well, number one, the world's suffering, people are suffering, things are expensive, people don't have a lot of money. I get all of that, and I'm part of it, just like probably you guys are. So the people who lost their jobs, and the news story here, obviously, right, is the entire studio shut down. Saints Row basically killed them in the same way that Gollum basically killed that studio, right? So team's gone. The legacy of that team is phenomenal, right? That team has made some incredible, incredible games. And I think that's what a lot of people are pointing to, where it's like, oh, you know, Embracer Group, and they shut down this team with such a legacy of games. On one side of things, like, yes, that is true. You have to also remember, though, that many people that made the original stuff that people think of when they think of good Volition games are no longer there. Much like we've talked about with other examples like Redfall, right? 70% of the team that made Prey left. So it's not the Prey team that made Redfall. And you got to remember that in the gaming industry. A lot of people don't stick around. A lot of your favorite gaming studios out there, at least from when they made your favorite game, are most likely not there anymore. Like my team that maybe made the Sly Cooper games or the teams that made the Mass Effect games. Mass Effect may be a little bit different, but a lot of people are just no longer there. So that's one thing to kind of say. Again, it's sad that people lost their jobs, and you don't really want people suffering, you know, on planet Earth, and you don't want people to have zero income when things are pretty darn bad already. But this is where the controversy kind of comes in. You need accountability. You need, like, when something bad happens and when you destroy things, something probably bad is going to happen to you. Not necessarily karma, but maybe karma, depending on how you look at it. So, again, the controversy kind of comes in where I don't say, like, good, like, you know, this is fantastic, everybody lost their jobs, but... You got to remember, these people destroyed not just Saints Row, but they, they just made a really bad game. So one thing I'd like to say is like the people that are looking for other jobs, I, I believe in second chances. I believe that you probably shouldn't be blacklisted from the industry based off of one game. We also don't know who caused it. I always kind of love to be told very specific things. Okay, that's kind of a part of my life. And the thing that sucks with the gaming industry is we don't really get told that. So the decision to do a lot of the things in Saints Row, where did that come from? Now, I do think there is a part of it where you can kind of separate talent from being told what to do. So if you're told to like purposely make bad choices, if you're told to like write a god-awful story with god-awful characters, you hopefully can tell the difference between somebody who's forced to do it, but maybe you can see the talent there versus people that are just not talented. And so using that as a very specific example, the writers of Saints Row were terrible, like were absolutely awful. I don't know if I want them working on my favorite game from another. So when they get hired at a Naughty Dog of the world or, a, you know, wherever, Bioware, I don't know if I really want them having a, a big, important role. Now, maybe a support role for sure. But I, I, I would honestly say, and again, like this is where it kind of really sucks. I'm, try, I'm like walking on eggshells, I guess. But I do have to speak my mind. The people that made the damning decisions for Saints Row should not have powerful positions at any company in the near future. Maybe they can get a second chance. Maybe they can work their way back up. But for people to like want them to like just kind of slide over and say, oh, you were the narrative lead, let's say. Narrative lead at Saints Row. Well, now you're going to be the narrative lead at Blank Game. I really would not feel confident about that game anymore because the person was lacking. Now, again, I'm sure some things were probably dictated that you have to make Saints Row a certain way. But I just don't think... The game was very good at all. In fact, several portions. I don't think it was like the worst game of all time. I actually said that when the game first came out. I don't think it's the worst game ever, but it is definitely bad. And again, like the Gollum situation, this was not like impossible to see at all. The game failed. It didn't really make money. People overwhelmingly kind of hated it. The Saints Row fans of old hated it. Also, I do have to take some shots at them considering they took some shots at fans. That was heavily, uh, you know, kind of written about and chronicalized that they took multiple shots at diehard fans of Saints Row going back and forth on Twitter, saying some nasty stuff, kind of laying down some direct statements. Like that stuff was not okay. Again, 
understand like those people I don't know if I want them leading any game ever uh maybe you know maybe they learn their lesson they say oh maybe we shouldn't have like gone after Saints Row fans maybe we shouldn't have destroyed what Saints Row was and not have made a game called Saints Row that wasn't really Saints Row or the many other terrible decisions they made in the game so I wanted to throw this video together for this reason. Again, it, it is controversial because it's, it's in a really tough spot. Like, you don't want these people suffering. You want them back on their feet. You don't want to see an entire studio shut down. That That's really, really rough. But also, it's like, well, these people did a terrible job. So exact, I want to know exactly whose fault it was. And and what do you do even with those people? Like when you say punish, what, like, what does that mean? Do they get jobs? Do they get fired? Like we live in a very uh, weird world where you're not allowed to like say certain things. I don't know. I don't want them, I guess, to be the safest, but also the most direct. Anybody who made any major decision in that Saints Row game, I don't think they should be making that same uh, level position in any other company. Like right now, I think that should absolutely not happen. So I don't know. I, I think if you make a really bad game, obviously bad stuff is probably going to happen. And in a way, it kind of was deserved. Now, again, it depends on who made that decision. If you say make a live service game, but it wasn't your call, you tried to make the best live service game you could, but it wasn't up to you. Your executives told you to do it. Well, what do you do with that studio? Actually, that's almost like a Bioware situation, right? Like Anthem, do you blame the studio? Well, yeah, you can. I mean, Anthem wasn't a very good game. I'm sure some specific people could be targeted, but also it's not the team's strength at all, right? That's not what they were supposed to do. And so what did they do? Well, they went back to what they're good at, right? So now they're doing Dragon Age. Now they're doing Mass Effect. That was a bad era with the Anthem live service kind of stuff. Now they're not doing it anymore. So I mean, were they punished? I'm sure some people were, but they also kind of went back on track. Obviously, they didn't get the chance to do it at Volition, but maybe they can get a chance to do it somewhere else. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure, as always, you're subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.